Hey everyone, it's MJ and in this video I want to look at the actuarial exam pass rates. So what I've got over here are the pass rates for the exams written in around April 2019, so the very first exam session of the year. And it is a little bit tricky looking at them because the exams have changed since I wrote them. Uh, they've got new codes, they've got new names, and sometimes they've even bundled some subjects together and split other ones apart. So it's a little bit confusing, so I'm going to refer to the subjects by their, by their name rather than their code. I am looking at the South African data, although I would expect it to be quite similar to the American, the English, and the Indian data as well. I think, I think yeah, the exams are kind of... Like if one exam is tough in South Africa, it's going to be tough in, in the other places as well. So I think we can use this as proxy data. Um, the way I look at the exams is that there's essentially there's four levels. Um, level one is what you do in your undergrad. Level two is what you're looking at doing at the end of your undergrad, maybe the beginning of your postgrad. Level three are your postgrad subjects. And then level four is what you do on your own outside of university. So level one is normally very mathematical. Uh, level two is more application. This is the famous CA1 exam or actuarial risk management, communications, uh, model documentation. Uh, level three is more your specialist subjects. And then, like I said, level four is your fellowship subject. So level three, you choose two and uh, level four, you choose one. So that yeah, going too much into the exam structure because it's probably going to change next year. Let's look at the actual pass rates. And I've ordered them in, you know, which exam people pass the most. Uh, and I've ordered it all the way down to the bottom where the subject, yeah, there was an exam that nobody passed. Um, but yeah, we'll get to that one. What I've also done is I've correlated it with the levels. So I've looked at the levels of the subjects, first their pass rates, and there's around a 63% correlation, meaning the lower the exam, um, the more likely it is people were to pass. And this is what we expect, more people to pass level one exams than to pass level four exams. Although the fourth, the fourth worst exam was a level one exam. Uh, so there are a little bit of anomalies. And what I also did is I correlated the amount of YouTube videos I have on the subjects uh, with the pass rate and I found that there was a 65% positive correlation. So the more videos I have on a topic, uh, the higher the pass rate. Um, although that might be because I'm just making videos on the easy subjects. But without further ado, let's let's get into these uh, these results. So coming up in first place was life contingencies. This is where we calculate, you know, um, how much money people need to put aside in order to you know, get money back when they, they die. Uh, this is basically bread and butter actuarial science. Uh, 175 people wrote the exam here in South Africa and we had a pass rate of 57%, which is very good. I mean, that's, that's more, more than half. Um, also at 57% was actuarial statistics. Now, for those of you who don't know, and this is a little bit of advertising, I have a whole bunch of videos on actuarial statistics on Udemy, which you can go and check out. I mean, I've also got a whole bunch of videos on life contingencies, uh, but they're for free on, on YouTube. Uh, third place, we have business finance, which I think was called accounting back in my day. Uh, that had a 54% pass rate. Um, only 41 people wrote it though, that's quite a small number. I think that's because a lot of people get that exemption at university because accounting is very easy. Um, then in fourth place we have financial maths. Um, this only had a pass rate of 48% but 159 people wrote it. Um, I've also got a lot of YouTube videos on this. Then I was very impressed by, by this one coming up in fifth place was the dreaded CA1 um, actuarial risk management exam. 207 people wrote it, 93 passed, so that gives us a rate of 45%, which I'm very impressed by because, in my opinion, that's, that's the hardest exam. So, and it came fifth, so that's not too bad. Then we see the very first um, level three exam popping up, and that is the specialist in the health subject. So this is like, you know, discovery, um, medical aids, and, and all those type of things. 
and that had a pass rate of 44%, which is very good. That was the best uh, pass rate for the specialist subjects. Um, coming back to a level one exam is business economics. And why did this only had a 41% pass rate? This is an easy subject. Why was the pass rate so low for that one? I would have expected business economics to be a little bit higher. Uh, but like I said, they might have changed it. They might have made the subject a little bit harder. Um, then we have another level three exam, and this is the risk specialist. This is for enterprise risk management. If you want to become a SARA actuary, uh, 78 people wrote to Chan South Africa, 32 passed. Uh, that's a pass rate of 41%, which I think, if I remember correctly, is above the global average. Shows that yeah, South Africans uh, are very good when it comes to risk calculations. Uh, then we have the pension specialist subject coming in at ninth with a 40% pass rate. Communications um, exam, I mean, this is a subject some people get it and it's like it's the easiest exam. Like for me, it was one of my easiest exams. I know other people who just struggle, for, struggle with it. I mean, it's a lot of essay writing. There's hardly any maths. And of the 183 people who wrote it, so that's quite a lot, only, uh, yeah, there's only a 35% pass rate. Um, then we get in 11th position our first fellowship exam and that is for the life fellowship and that like I say that's your traditional actuary um, and just like how we saw uh, contingencies was had the highest pass rate with the level one exams life um, the life fellowship has got the highest pass rate of the fellowships um, but only a 34% which is I mean that's, that's still low only one in three people are passing the fellowship, I mean, which kind of sounds, yeah, makes sense. I, it took me three attempts to pass my fellowship. So that, that percentage is quite accurate for me. Um, then we see another fellowship, the banking fellowship. This is very much a unique exam to South Africa. I think when it first came out, it had a 0% pass rate. It's now come up to have a 33% pass rate. So that's, that's pretty good. Um, and quite a lot of people wrote it. 21 people wrote it which is more than the Health Fellowship, which comes in next. Health Fellowship had a pass rate of 31%. It's pretty good. Then there is the General Insurance Specialist Subject. Oh, I wrote this at university. It was so tough. Oh, I didn't get the exemption for it. It was, I found it like very, very challenging, but they've got a 30% pass rate for it. So that's pretty good, General uh, Specialist. Then the Life Specialist, um, only has a 27% pass rate. So it's interesting how that pass rate is lower than its fellowship. Um, yeah, that is quite an interesting one. Then we have risk models, which is going back to a level one subject. And this was back in my day, see, back in my day, this was two separate exams. It was known as CT4 and CT6. They decided to add these things together and add on a computer element. And yeah, we can see a pass rate of 27%, which is very, very low. Then we see the lowest specialist subject from a pass rate, which is a little bit awkward for me because I actually have YouTube videos on this one. This is the financial specialist. Although not many people watch the financial specialist uh, videos of mine. I've also got a book. If you want, I'll put a link in the, to the Amazon uh, store where I've written a book on just understanding financial instruments because there's a way to break them up so that they're quite easy to, to comprehend. Um, and you can swap these little parts around and create your own little instruments. It's quite fun. But that only had a pass rate of 26%. That's you know, the lowest of the specialists. Then financial engineering, which is the level one. It's the level one subject. This is what we do in undergrad. This had a pass rate of 26%, which is incredibly low for a level one subject. It is the lowest pass rate for the level one subject. And that it's, it's also, they, they've made this one tricky because when they destroyed CT6 and they combined half of it with uh, you know, survival models to create risk models, they also moved the, the runoff triangles and ruin theory into this exam which was already difficult with stochastic calculus and Ito's lemma and oh, you guys remember all that tricky stuff. So it's, yeah, so I think I think it probably was a difficult exam, but 26% yeah, is a very low pass rate. Um, I'll be giving a workshop on this one on the 3rd of August in Cape Town and again sometime in September. 
So if you are part of the whole ESSA uh, society here in South Africa, make sure you register for that. And then you'll be able to see me in person. And yeah, we're going to go and try and increase the pass rate because 26% is very low. And then we've got three more exams to go. Financial Fellowship had a pass rate of only 17%. Oh, this one is this one's a tricky one. Like I said, it took me three attempts to get that. Then the general fellowship comes in at 14%. But the worst exam, the one where people did the worst, was the pension fellowship. And that had a pass rate of 0%. Zero. Wow. Look, it, it was also the, the the less popular exam. Only four people wrote it. Uh, but it had 0% pass rate. So there goes that myth of, oh, you know, it's the bell curve, they have to pass, you know, so many people. Pensions, they were like, nah, nah, this this exam, I don't know, maybe the examiner was in a bad mood when he wrote it, he's like, I'm going to give them impossible questions. Uh, because, yeah, no one was able to pass that 0%. And that, we sometimes do see that. You do sometimes come across exams that have a 0% pass rate. Very rarely will there be a 100% pass rate because then I think maybe they will adjust the pass mark so that, you know, not everybody passes. Um, but yeah, when you can see it's not like the other way around. If, if the examiner feels that no one is worthy, no one's worthy. It's not like they have to pass a certain number. But yeah, that is the pass rates uh, for the actuarial exams written here in South Africa for the first semester of 2019. Um, it's going to be interesting to see whether my little workshop that I do, look, I mean, 26% is the target to beat. Um, I mean, it should be easy to beat, but I want to see if I can actually get financial engineering after my workshop and put it as number one. Let's see if we can get the highest pass rate for financial engineering. That's going to be a little bit of a challenge. Um, but like I say, if you're writing some of these other subjects, I do have videos on YouTube. Uh, Actuarial statistics is on Udemy. And if you're doing financial instruments, um, especially the fellowship or the specialist in finance, check out my book on Amazon. Um, and then, yeah, I think that's all we have time for for this video. Let me know your thoughts. If you've got any comments, write them down below. And yeah, I'll see you guys soon for another video. Cheers.